All right, so here we are with a diesel pusher, 30, 36 foot. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is back up underneath it, which I already did. Drop your underreach, back up underneath it, extend out, and you're gonna wanna lift up onto something and put it up on some blocks so you can actually get underneath it and have room to work. And uh, sometimes you gotta do that so you have clearance to even get your forks on it. Uh, now this one, <clears throat> the wheels aren't so far back that I can't reach the axle. Otherwise, I'd probably go for spring hangers. Um, and it's not heavy enough that I need to go to the spring hangers. Um, you know, if it, if it was heavier then obviously there'd be way more leverage on the back of my truck being pushed out this far. Uh, but I can go back and reach that axle just fine. Um, and the whole time you're underneath this thing, you want to keep it on the blocks. Never lift it off the blocks while you're under here working. Don't trust the hydraulics with your life. It's not worth it. Anyway, so we should be, uh, should be lined up good with those forks in between the U-bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, push it under there and make sure I got a good lift before I chain it down. There's two things that I am really picky about, and I will do myself to make sure they are done right. And one is chaining the axle to my underreach, or frame, or whatever, um, and and my tag lights, my towing lights. Um, so I'll demonstrate how I do my chains with a basic fork to axle like this, <clears throat> and then uh, I'll do the other side. Then we'll get on to the drive line and safety chains and lights and all that happy stuff. But first off, take the end of your chain that has the tag on it, drop it. We don't want it. Grab the other end that has nothing. First thing we're gonna do is it's going up and over the axle. Ensure not to uh, go around steering linkage on the back end. You're going to have a bad day. And I should mention before you do this, push your underreach back all the way so that the axle is against your forwardmost fork. I'm going to go ahead and whip this guy from the inside out. leaving just enough <clears throat> chain on there I'll show you. just enough chain for this hook to hang down like that and you want the open open end towards the inside next pull that tight doesn't have to be super tight neither does this right here just loop that under there now a little log truck Take this other end that we didn't want, and we're going around the outside of the leaf spring, or in this case, airbag. Go ahead and drop that guy down on that side. Right there. The loose doesn't matter. <clears throat> the slack, because uh, we're going to tighten that up here in a minute. Um, and then, again, grab this end with the tag on it, and you're going around both your chains on the on the front of your your underreach and just take this end and drop it to the center. Pull that guy. Doesn't have to be super tight again and we're gonna hook it into that chain. Again, it does not need to be tight because you will never get it undone. So that just hangs in there like that. And we're gonna leave that guy dangle for a second because uh we're gonna end up hooking him up, you know, up somewhere. It's probably on the back side so it doesn't come out of here. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and do the other side and we'll get on. And uh, there's the other side. 
chains are all on so what's going to happen is when we release the brakes on the motorhome after we hook up air to it it's going to slide back and when it slides back on those forks it's going to tighten the hell out of these chains and uh, it won't be going anywhere and even if you have to stop quickly and it slides forward it's fine it's still not coming unhooked and once you start going forward again it will uh settle back into its spot and then uh we're we'll, gonna go ahead and lift it up and i'm gonna put the safety chains on uh probably go around this bar right here in the front it's a generator mount but it's bolted to the frame on both sides and uh, i'm gonna run my safeties over that right here and then we'll get back to the drive line and tag lights and hook it up next thing with the drive line uh push the motor home back with your under reach and put some blocks in front of the tires and then roll the motor home up onto the blocks so you have enough room to work underneath it and get that stupid drive line out of there So you can see what it's doing. Pushing that U joint, pushing the uh, the end caps right out of there. And you can just pull it right off. See, look at there. Man, I like this motorhome. It's good and easy. This never happens. Never say never, I guess, huh? out took uh, oh I don't know seven minutes uh, just a friendly reminder from your uh, neighborhood tow truck driver clean up after your dog please we're all hooked up got our safeties got the chains good six inches off the ground in the front tires tires are all good Back end's not dragging. Sometimes you'll drag that little rock guard down there, but it's kind of what it's for, so it don't really matter. Now, on to uh, my other super picky part, the light bar. So I'm going to set you down over here if I can somewhere. Maybe right there will work. Huh? That works. Get that little piece of grass out of the way. So there's that ladder back there, and we're going to utilize it. Now we are fortunate enough to have a cordless light bar, but even if we had a hundred foot cord to go on this thing, it wouldn't make a difference. I'd still do it the same way. Just like so. It sticks out a little bit, but that don't matter. It ain't moving. Take our little switch, blink, flash a couple times, letting me know it's hooked up. Okay, 
we're good. Let's get out of here. Close the door. And uh, <clears throat> on this one, we're lucky enough that the, uh, the air brake is for a driveline brake that's attached to the transmission. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's that round drum looking thing right there. That's what our air brake controls. Uh, it's hydraulic brakes with an air driveline brake, I guess. Um, so I don't need to hook air up to this thing, which makes my life way easier. Now you gotta be careful going over bumps and such because there's the oil pan and you've got, what, eight inches of clearance on it. So you don't wanna be taking that thing out. Well, that's your training pan, there's your oil pan. But you know what I mean. Okay, get out of here.